Welcome to all viewers into the point with IQ. It's a comprehensive series of import export management with shipping for both professional and non-professional viewers. Today's topic is how international trade can survive under COVID-19. This is the first part of the topic of international trade financing and economics which already been described on my first video. Before get start just click the bell icon and subscribe the channel to get new upcoming videos on this channel. I think all the viewers are have quit similar impression about COVID-19, which has changed the world dramatically, not in the social sector but it also changes the international trade business. In my opinion, primarily we need to eradicate all essential constraints in our mind about this pandemic situation before to get ready to start or manage our import-export business. I have label here some realities which we want to apprehend before, to get designate the import-export business under COVID-19. First thing to understand today what we have about COVID-19. There are several conspiracy theories circling around us, regardless of that this pandemic is spread out deliberately or not. But we have to concentrate what knowledge about COVID-19 we have, and how we can shape up this knowledge, to our international trade business policy. There are five perceptible points about COVID-19 we have right away. Viewer. You know about this pandemic surrounded our planet very seriously. It starts from one origin and spread out almost all over the globe. Our major concern as far as import-export business is concerned is about the sustainability of COVID-19. That's why all five points are circling around the sustainability of this virus on different trade materials. Point number one. COVID-19 sustainability on the surface of different material at standard temperature and pressure is quit favoring us. Consultants tested it on so many materials like metals, stones, fabrics, plastic, wood grains etc. And the aggregated life they have found around 2-3 to three hours at normal environment. As initially we didn't had enough knowledge about it as far as the biochemistry, physiology, molecular biology, ecology, evolution and clinical aspects of COVID-19 is concerned. I remembered that researchers initially said that the life cycle of COVID-19 on the surface of different material might be about 18 to 10 days. But now after 6 months the proportion is reduced up to few hours. Point number 2. About the existence of COVID-19, there is no evidence to date about survival of the COVID-19 virus in water, which are been in this planet, like sea water, rivers, lakes, drinking water etc and also not even in a rainwater and sewage system also. The virus is likely to become inactivated significantly faster than non-enveloped human enteric viruses. With known waterborne transmission, such as adenoviruses, norovirus, rotavirus, and hepatitis A etc. Point number 3. There has also been no scientific evidence about the infiltration of this virus, over livestock or cattle farming. Additional of this there have not been any reports of transmission of COVID-19 virus over and done with food. Point number 4. Maria Van Kerkhove, the WHO's technical lead on the COVID-19 pandemic concluded that there is no evidence that non-symptomatic COVID-positive patients are causing COVID-19 to other person. The only way of penetration is through symptomatic COVID patients to other human or person. Point number 5. According to the physicians and scientists, 12 or 14 days isolation can recover patients from COVID-19 disease. China is an example of that, where this pandemic actually emerged from. And New Zealand also declaring the country free of the novel coronavirus. Regardless of that, some cases also has appear after that announcement. But they recovered their people, without using any tested anti-COVID-19 vaccine, because the body itself developed its antinode, which will prevent them in future as well, for the reason that once a body develops antinode of COVID-19, 
second time it develops more quickly than the previous. Plasma therapy is also an example of that which give us a remarkable result so far. Now see the latest development, about anti-COVID-19 vaccine campaign. Till date, the well-tested anti-COVID vaccine is dexamethasone. But in case of children, pregnancy, and breastfeeding females, prednisolone and hydrocortisone are suggested, which are been the cheapest drug and also available in the market and only be prescribed under physician. Consequently the argument is, who will wants to be a part of anti-COVID-19 vaccine campaign? When once you have carry and recovered by yourself with minimum chances to take on again. Moreover if you ruled it compulsory for international traveler. The percentage is not considering quit respectable as per investment point of view. At present it seem like to me that the voyage of anti-COVID-19 vaccine is near to be over, and we will roving with COVID at least couple of more years too. In other hand if pharmaceutical companies still insist, or eyeing to brand anti-COVID vaccine in the market. The reason of that, I think, my viewers are much smarter than anyone else. At that moment three main question has reached in our mind. Question number one. Why Bill Gates gave millions of dollars to WHO for the preparation of anti-COVID-19 vaccine? I think Bill Gates' intention towards pharmaceutical industry was pretty clear, especially after his very famous prediction about spreading of pandemic disease from China. My point of view is he knew just before anyone else that, US President Doolin Trump looking to cut down the US grant to WHO, which equivalent to around 25% of total WHO grant coming from different countries and NGOs throughout. That time was the best for him to enter into pharmaceutical business, despite that, a man who ever known about their IT-based expertise, so how he could compensate his intention towards the pharmaceutical industry, the destiny creates the chance for him and he took it quite smartly. I take it as a smart work only. Question number 2. Why all the trade activities was subsided because of COVID-19? The answer of this question is, we never tasted a situation like this before that COVID-19 actually gave us, even the world couldn't envisage that this pandemic, can feast all parts of the world, one by one, and its moves towards one country, to another country so fast, today all the nations have in a state of emergency, they have no idea how they could deal with this pandemic situation, in other words, the world was not well prepared to deal with this pandemic disease, that's why, we consult with each other and had chosen the basic preventive protocols, as same for any other pandemic disease. Question number 3. According to above discussion how we justify increasing death toll numbers? The answer is, COVID-19 has 2% mortality rate. If we compared it with some other only respiratory viral diseases like severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS, adenovirus, parainfluenza, common cold and flu, we found that COVID-19 mortality rate has far behind them some of other respiratory viral diseases. So in my mind increased death toll numbers is due to scattering haste of this pandemic because once you have 2 to 3 million COVID-19 patients in only 15 to 20 days time span, even 2% mortality rate shown up thousands of people death intimation on, newspapers or television and of course on social media too. Moreover most of the death numbers are on above age of 55, and we have to remember that, any viral infections can be more serious for older adults. It not just only be the case of COVID-19. What the conclusion is. To the point with IQ concluded that, if the second wave of COVID-19 will emerge, the world cannot react it like the same as we act against it before. I have seen that all trading activities will remain open, and act same as it does before with some minor changes. Right now United States and even in the UK they got thousands of patients every day. But the schools, shopping malls, amusement parks, bars, cinema, stock market, 
port and shipping all of them are open under the instruction of their government policies. So all the import-export trading companies, or any concerned person, who has engaged with import-export business, don't have to worry about the upcoming future trade. We just have to reconcile our international import-export business policy which will be well defined on my upcoming second part of this video. So, now this is the end of this video. There are numerous superfluous realities I have about the infiltration of COVID-19, but I commit myself once the understanding has established, just leave the topic, and this is the main SOPs of this channel, but this restriction is only for me, you can raise your questions right on your comment box, or by given email, thanks all of you for joining us, I hope you valued it very well. My top priority is to brand all impending videos more precise and of course, to the point. Click the bell icon and subscribe.